So you took your shot at Tamlin Lancelot. You see a double-sided lancer and you strike gold. But instead of Meluko, you get Giga Chad, or as he's otherwise known, Sir Percival. Now don't do anything stupid like burning him. Despite his appearance, Percival is a force to be reckoned with for new and established players alike. Let's find out why. Percival's main offensive buff is Protection of the Holy Grail. It's a 3-turn personal arts buff, party NP damage steroid, and a 20% battery to boot. All of these effects scale with levels, so you'll want to prioritize this to make sure you get the full value on that battery. In fact, it's the only one of Percival's skills that you really need to level. That brings us to Guardian Knight, Sacred Lance. It's a 3-turn taunt that increases his NP gain from being hit. Multi-turn taunts are very rare in this game, and I can't overstate their power. Usually, the servants in question pay a hefty price for this boon, either in stat deficiencies or in very narrow skill sets. But Percival has it on top of his offensive uses, which is pretty impressive. The NP gain effect scales with levels, but it only applies defensively, meaning you won't be using it in your 3-turn farming runs. However, if you're a less developed player, brawling will still be a factor in your clears, and you can exploit this taunt to fast charge his Noble Phantasm. A lingering taunt isn't all upside, though. Percival is going to take a fair bit of damage in sustained combat, even against archers. It also means he's going to intercept any single-target Noble Phantasms your enemies throw out. Lucky for you, he has an answer for that. Light of Salvation is a one-turn targeted invuln and heal. While the heal scales with levels, it caps out at a paltry 2k health restored, not nearly enough to justify the resources you'd be sinking into it. The invuln is what you're really after. You should, of course, time it against any incoming NPs, but if you don't have to worry about that, consider using it on turn 2 of your taunt cycle. This lets you heal up any damage you took on your first turn. As a targeted effect, you also have the option of deploying it on an ally instead. For instance, if you're being rushed down with an AoE or Percival's mostly dead anyway, you can use this to preserve one of your charge supports or a reserve attacker to keep the fight going. As for Percival's own Noble Phantasm, that would be Longinus Count Zero. It's an AoE arch attack with preemptive Envelope Pierce and a flat 3k heal for whichever frontliner is at the lowest health percentage. It also has an overcharge effect of preemptive NP damage. Tragically, that last effect is only one turn in duration, meaning Percival can't snowball his damage. The Envelope Pierce lets you attack protected enemies while also running extremely aggressive craft essences. Black Rail in particular is Percival's bread and butter, and he can run it with impunity. Better yet, between Black Rail's self-damage and Percival's taunt, you can manipulate it so that he regularly gets the heal from Longinus Count Zero. Just be aware that the combo doesn't work nearly as well against enemies with AoE basic attacks, which will make a huge mess of your team's health percentages. If you don't have Black Rail, you can just use Ocean Flyer, a freebie from the upcoming summer event. I'll also note that Heal Amplifier craft essences exist, but the category affecting outgoing healing is a lot weaker than incoming heal amps. For this reason, I'd avoid them and just run something to make the fight shorter instead. This package puts Percival in a pretty interesting spot, but let's talk low account usage first. In messy early game fights, taunt invuln combos are very powerful, and Percival can force charge Longinus Count Zero by deliberately taking damage. However, he's middle of the pack as far as Lancer attack stats go, and his face card situation is rough. If you're forced to smack things around, he charges slowly. For this reason, I'd recommend a defensive team that opportunistically fires off NPs. Mash will drastically increase your effective health with her defensive buffs, and she has a taunt invuln combo of her own for tactical redundancy. Asclepius is a healer that excels in more debuff-heavy fights, and he can provide Percival a Guts buff to survive in case he bites off more than he can chew. Paracelsus can also donate a Guts effect, and he's the more offensively oriented of the two options. His massive battery lets him attack weak first waves himself, while his arts and NP gain buffs will make Percival more efficient on subsequent turns. Sir Percival's most potent low-rarity ally actually comes next year. That would be Zhu Fu, the concert you simp herself. She has some defensive utility in the form of a party heal and a weak crit chance reduction. One of her skills also confers buff removal resistance. By putting this on Percival, he can maintain his taunt invuln combo, even against buff purging enemies. But Jufu is also the final stepping stone between more archaic setups and the double Castoria teams that defined high in arts gameplay. Jufu packs an NP gain effect and a 30% battery that fit quite nicely with Percival's own 20% battery. The remaining 50% can be dealt with by using a borrowed Castoria. But let's say you get the metaphorical Holy Grail and roll a Castoria of your own. Now you get to enter the wonderful world of arts looping. Two words that strike fear into every seething poor friend. Despite Percival only having one relevant skill on this front, he's actually pretty good as far as Lancers go. You see, the Lancer class is in a really weird spot, where, as far as arts farmers go, four stars like Percival are way better value than five stars like Ritra. What do I mean by value? Party cost for one. Five stars eat up a fair bit more of your party's deployment limit and can restrict your options when you're trying to min-max event CEs and backline bond. Secondly, four stars like Percival are easier to get than five stars on solo raid-ups, which is the case for both Percival on his first banner and Lancer Meltrilis on her next appearance. Percival has the added advantage of being a general pool servant, so he can surprise you at any moment. And get this, of all the farming Lancers, Percival is the only one with a four-hit noble phantasm. And for the one guy who's gonna ask, no, Mary Anning doesn't count. That fourth hit matters a lot in terms of the charge you get back, and it makes standard 3-3x nodes mercifully easy for him to farm. 
Depending on what you fight though, you may want to pack a charge or NP gain mystic code to smooth things over, especially against berserkers. Percival does have two weaknesses of a sort though. Firstly, he's not the definitive arts lancer because he can't do regular enemy arrangements like Mysterious Alter Ego Lambda. Her effective 60% battery gives her a massive edge in that department. Secondly, the battery being on Percival's arts buff is annoying since the numbers don't line up neatly with his max depend skill and Castoria's NP gain buff. You should still unlock his append though. If you want, you can just leave it at level 1 to get the 10%. Combined with Protection of the Holy Grail and every Castoria buff except for one of the attack buffs, you'll have 30% to spare for a subsequent turn. If you're running double Castoria Percival against the boss, you have a bit of a dubious option which is staggering Castoria's targeted invulns. Combined with Percival's own buff, you can fully cover him during his taunt turns. Frankly, I'd just let him tank a hit or two. The Castoria Arts buff is way too valuable not to use immediately. If you absolutely need to tank the third turn, try setting up a Castoria NP after Percival's. This will give you two stacks of anti-enforcement defense. Two Castorias spread 60% charge to your entire frontline, so you can easily meet the remaining amount with a starting charge CE like Dragon's Meridian. And here's an extra special trick for those of you who got very lucky, or perhaps very unlucky on Tamlin Lancelot's banner. Percival gains his taunt at first ascension, which is still a relatively low level. Because of this, you can use a spare copy of him as an esports servant, deliberately underleveled and without foes. His purpose would be to carry a craft essence that benefits your main attacker, either an entry buff like Ox Demon King or an on-death debuff like 500 Year Obsession. Then you just pop his taunt and let nature take its course. Percival provides quite a lot of value, good at both high and low end stages of account building. His kit may seem unbalanced, but rest assured he fills both defensive and farming functions admirably. As with a lot of farmers, NP tour higher is desirable, though you're really in his banner for Tamlin Lancelot. Short term, I wouldn't sweat Percival's NP level too much. Given his presence in the permanent summoning pool, odds are you'll run into him sooner or later. Thanks for watching. I'll be rolling Lancelot all this week, and I expect to get quite a few of this guy in the process. Stop by and watch the proceedings at twitch.tv slash Reno Tyson. I start at 3pm Pacific time, and if you missed any rolls, I'll post the highlights over at Fino and Friends. Sample on screen right now. But that's it, I'll see you around. Till next time.